Welcome back, my little friends, to the podcast that apparently never ends. Same mug, same co-hosts. Yeah. Sorry. You know what we should do? We should uh, <laughs> rename this podcast and launch it with slightly different lighting, and we can call it Being Inteled. Well, please explain the context of that joke. <clears throat> so for the, the dear listeners at home, <clears throat> Intel has come out with some, uh, we'll, we'll call it marketing and engineering material, but I don't know about much of the engineering material, but they're renaming a bunch of their stuff to make it, it in my opinion so far, sound fancier than it probably is, or at least what we've known. But... I, I, I at least throw out, I, I can't remember the second company, Qualcomm and some other company have agreed to use Intel's foundries. Mm -hmm. In the future, you know, once they're built out again um, to, I don't know. Anyway, the thing we were talking about earlier was I'm trying to, I'm, I'm not a pro, I'm not a hardware guy, you know, so I'm, I'm reading this and I'm like, okay, I have this vague understanding that in Intel, like if you just pretend this announcement didn't happen, that Intel has, had, we know that Intel has had trouble moving their process, manufacturing processes to lower nanometer mm -hmm. sizes, I guess. And um, this is the part where I'm a little fuzzy, but Intel has a technology called SuperFin, which I believe is a, kind of a 3D process, so it's not all mm -hmm. flat on one plane. It kind of raises the, you know, like a skyscraper. Um, and I, I'm going to spitball here, but I want to say Intel's claim is that their 10 nanometer processes is as efficient as a 7 nanometer process used by another company. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So with that in mind, if what I said is vaguely true, I, I could I, I could be mixing up 14 and 10. I don't remember where we're at, but because, you know, it's Intel. I don't know. Um, <laughs> they're just renaming all their stuff now because they don't like this nanometer thing. That's <laughs> sort of how I'm reading it. I, I haven't. I'm just started going through this. So I'm not I'm not I'm really not up to speed on this, as Brad noted before we started this. Never stopped us before. Right. But. Um, you know, just trying to figure it out. But but it looks like what they're doing is, I mean, obviously they have plans to reduce the size of the packages, you know, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. They're, they're they're working on this, right? They're gonna they they still feel that having their own foundries is like a a huge Intel advantage. And okay, you know, fair enough, it's a strategy. But it looks like the renaming is just a, at least for, for now, is kind of a marketing thing. Am yeah. I being cynical? I don't know. I don't mean I don't to be cynical. Yeah, that's unusual. Um, <laughs> well, it it does feel very high level. Like just, we'll yeah. just take that PowerPoint slide and remove it, put this new one in about our new strategy and technologies, and then just keep yeah. doing what we were doing yesterday. I wish I when did this? This must have this was yesterday. Yeah, I would have watched this. I mean, I'm still probably will, but I I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So ten nanometer is super fin. Okay. I don't understand. No, I think what I just said is accurate. So their, their, their seven nanometer processy, process, which they're going to have in a couple of years or something, is going to be the equivalent of what I would, I think other companies would call a four nanometer process. That's the claim, mm -hmm. I think. An enhanced superfin, which is what? Still 10 nanometer probably? They're calling it seven. <laughs> you know? Like I don't. Am I missing something? Is it, it's kind of like, like calling a, a V6 with a turbo equivalent to a V8, maybe? Yeah, well, no, calling it a V8. Like saying, yeah, yeah that is. we're going to call this an 8. Is it eight, is it eight cylinders? Uh, don't worry about cylinders. <laughs> don't worry about cylinders. It's an 8. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it is like that. I mean, obviously, it, the, it's... Or maybe it's more like a V8 with the fuel efficiency of a... Four banger. I, don't know. I know. I, let's not overthink it. I, yeah, I was just, I was just thinking the same thing. We're going in the opposite direction. Doesn't matter. You get the idea. You know, one of the things that my father was confused by. He always bought the same kind of car. There were six cylinders, and uh, the most recent one he bought was a four cylinder, and he was, he was actually kind of upset about it. And um, but the guy at the dealership explained to him, no, the engines are way more efficient than they were before, and this car is faster than the car he used to own. And uh, his experience driving it has the same, you know, obviously a four cylinder will have a little bit of a, 
I don't want to call it a death rattle, but like a, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like a, you know, it doesn't have the same kind of, you know, yeah. heady to it or whatever. But the, there's no kahunas uh, to it. Y- yeah, yeah, it was just, <laughs> right. The noise. At least. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, I, anyway, I, I'm, I apologize to everyone on Earth if what I, everything I just said is wrong. I, I literally am just <laughs> at the beginning of this. I'm trying to process it. I, I uh, it's, it's very effective marketing because I, I'm, I'm still very confused by it. But I think that's what's happening. I appreciate that this whole podcast could just be, you know what? Just, just be, an apology. Just be a goldfish, <laughs> even though that's not even really a true statement, I don't believe, but whatever, where you just forget things right away. <laughs> Anyways, um, because I have this wired up, Paul, did you see this thing? Bam! I yeah, I. that looks fake to me, for one thing. Um, I'm just, I, I'm not going to write this up. Um, I'm not convinced this is real, and if it is, I'm embarrassed for Microsoft. So I, I just don't know what to say. Um, yeah, the biggest thing, if that is real, is the, the that now has a massive camera bump, and which means it can't lay flat. Um, yeah, which the old one I, didn't have. A, oh, did, did not have a camera bump. So. Oh yeah, 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 right. I, I this device, look, I, I personally I don't see the value in it, but accepting the fact that people do, which is fine, right? Of course. Um. I don't think the camera is the thing that was the problem. I <laughs> you know, agree. the camera was terrible. I get yep. that. But I mean, I don't think people were like, man, I would totally use this. But, uh, you know, the camera. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's, I don't think that's, uh, yeah. I don't think that was the big complaint. We also had this guy. I think I still have this put it correctly. This one I'm much more confident in. So this is uh, the patent drawing from Microsoft. I, I, <laughs> I believe this is actually the next generation Surface Book. Well, okay. This is that's a little alarming. Um, well, I'm pretty I sure that I, they're changing the well, form factor, or they might call it something different. I don't know if they're going to call it a Surface I don't know Book. If I can do this Let me show you a computer real quick yeah. if I can. Yeah. Okay. So in there. Okay. So uh, HP's made two of these things. This is the the new mm-hmm. latest version. Is called the HP Elite Folio. This yep. is a Windows 10 ARM device, which is mm-hmm. kind of interesting. The earlier version was a not an Elite. It's probably a Spectre Folio mm-hmm. leather cover. This is a faux leather. The other one was a real leather, um, and that one was an Intel design. It was a Y series, whatever. But uh, the, this is a, a unique take on a transforming or convertible PC because it looks like a, a laptop. If yep. I can, Anyway, but to your point or to the point of that drawing, this mm-hmm. thing popped and you can do this with it, right? Mm-hmm. And if, I don't know if you can. <laughs> Sorry. Um, which is a lot like that picture you just showed us, by yeah. the way. Um, or you can, you know, go all the way forward and it becomes a tablet. So yep. I love this design. I um, I think this is smart. It's innovative. It's, a, like I said, a unique take on the convertible category. I also think it's a much better take personally. Yep, and uh, one of the big problems with Surface Book, as you know, is the d- detachable screen causing lots of reliability issues. So it looks like mm-hmm. what they do is avoid that. Yep. Um, that little <laughs> contraption is crazy looking. I mean... I, uh, my guess I, is that that's to keep it floating. So unlike the HP where it had to be uh, resting, I bet okay. that that creates enough friction that it just hovers or something. Right. Yeah, there you go. So it's slightly different. Um, yeah. The base of that... And then actually the screen part too, I would say, looks very similar to what you see in a, a Surface Book today, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I still don't see complexity there though, and I, I and to me that's the Achilles heel of the Surface Book. It's just the complexity. Well, that yep. and the the bezels, which today look like they're about an inch and a half <laughs> thick, but I'm sure they'll fix that. Um, okay. Well. Yeah. Interesting. And what's the, we don't have any idea when this might or might not occur. Um, there's going to be an event in the fall. I know that for sure. So my my guess is that this is going to be a hero device for Windows 11. So TPM oh. 2.0 included and all that good stuff. Right. That's that's what makes a hero device these days. Mm-hmm. Maybe with some Maybe trading on TPM futures soon. I've got a basket of TPM futures over here. and um... <laughs> exactly. Well, unfortunately, they just announced TPM 3.0, so... Don't, don't hurt me when I'm already down. <laughs> Not a whole lot else is going on, right? We've got Microsoft earnings today, tonight. Yeah, that's right. Full uh, today, year so. reportings. Yeah, 
Right. So quarterly and annual. That's that's actually big news. Mm-hmm. Um, We'll see. Yeah, uh, well, actually, and then there's the flight simulator thing. We should oh, yeah. we should mention this. This is kind of a big deal. Have you tried this? I have not. I have it installed, like queued up. I, okay. I always you... point like over here as if anybody knows what the hell right. is in my I house. But yep. it's it's yep. literally that way. <laughs> and okay. so I will give this a. Uh... And you have an S? Is that what you're going to try to? X. I have an X. You have an X. Okay. So I, was, yep. I, I I'm curious about the S experience myself. I know you asked me about that mm. the other day, yesterday, whatever. But. Um, I, my son has that now, so is is just sitting here unused, you know. And uh, my son actually, on his own, has subscribed to Xbox Game Pass. By the way, I, if there's anything up. that says this service is viable more than that, I don't know yeah. what it is. Um, but I've heard that the, uh, for, I think it's 4K 60 frames a second on an S, if you can believe that. Um, maybe it's 30, but I thought that's what it said. And anyway, the visuals are supposed to be incredible. I will say on the X, it's breathtaking i actually brought my wife in to look at it and Mm -hmm. you know i i mean i have a lot of experience in paris so you kind of look through the little adventures you can go on i'm like oh paris cool i know paris really well and um it's it's pretty i mean the only thing that's missing and i don't this is not a debit on their part i mean it's like the only thing you can't see are individual cafes and stores and stuff but i mean the buildings or, and of course, obviously the famous places, mm-hmm. you know, all the sites in Paris are all, I mean, they're amazing. It's, it's, it's an astonishing graphical thing. I mean, I, I had a couple of readers telling me uh, there are slower planes you can get. That's one of the issues, no matter how slow I couldn't get this thing. I want to like fly under the Eiffel tower, but really what I want to do is just fly it slowly and just kind of enjoy the view. And I can't get it to go slow enough. Uh, and it's touchy, you know, cause yeah. it, you know, it's a plane, right? Um, and he can't shoot anything, which I think is kind of a, a downer. But anyway, um, oh, God. <laughs> no, but I guess there's a mode where you can just, it's kind of like a sightseeing mode. So you can just, it just flies it for you and you can just, you can, I guess you can change the view and look around, but it's beautiful. It's the type of thing I would just probably leave on just because it's like kind mm-hmm. of mesmerizing. You know? Yeah. Just a nice calming background. Yeah. It really is neat. Unlike us. Mm-hmm.